Hi team, I hope you're all well. It is day one of Final Book Support Group Readathon round three, and this time we are doing a 48 hour round. It's currently 11 a.m. and I have not started anything yet, so <laughs> it won't be 48 hours for me specifically, but I am hosting sprints in an hour at 12 p.m. and I thought I would get this video started. I was supposed to be at Jade's this weekend with Gav, and um, my car has ended up letting me down. There is a problem with it and it cannot be fixed till next week, which means that I can still drive it locally, just not long distance. So my chip, 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 my trip to Jade's was uh, completely kiboshed. Um, and I went and drank my sorrow, sorrows last night because I was feeling really down about it. So um, I'm feeling a little bit delicate this morning, I'm not going to lie. However, I am hoping as the day goes on and I get some food in me that I will feel better. Uh, but I thought that we would start this video off. So so this is what my TBR in general looks like for this reading vlog, for this readathon this weekend. Uh, we're already several hours in, we're nearly 12 hours into it and I haven't started anything, but I have decided what I'm gonna do is take Rainbow Grey, Eye of the Storm and Starfell, Willow and Moss and the Magic Thief out of the running because these two will be perfect for Camp Believeathon later on in the month for Gav. Um, this one for released in 2022 and this one for continuous series because I know that this isn't the last in the Rainbow Grey series. So I'm going to take those out of the running and now my TBR looks more like this. And I reckon what's going to happen is that I might do this. I don't know if I'm going to get to a kiss for a kiss. I would like to but I don't know if I'm going to. So I really do want to get hooked to Hook, Line and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. I really do want to get to A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers. And I would like to fit in a couple of graphic novels as well. So we will see what happens here, but I actually think what I'm gonna do is start off with Hook, Line and Sinker. I have the audiobook for it and we have 50 minutes until sprint starts. So I need to get myself ready. I need to tidy up a little bit. So while I'm doing that, I can listen to the audiobook um, and see how I get on. I may look and see if there's an audio for this. It's only short, but um, it's just another series that I can box off and finish. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I actually need to go and take a picture of this now though for my TBR um, for one of the prompts because I did do a um, Instagram prompt selection. I did a reading prompt selection and I did a self-care prompt selection. So I need to go ahead and do the Instagram post. Um, so that's what I'm gonna go and do now and I will get myself ready and set up for sprints and get some reading done. Let's go. It's almost 9pm, I don't know if I'm showing you that, you can barely see it. It's almost 9pm 
and I've finished my first book. I would have finished my second by now. I was going to read Check Please Volume 2, but um, I did start it. I got up to like chapter 2 in here um, and then decided that I am really struggling with my anxiety today. So this is just too busy for me and I couldn't do it. So I decided that I probably wasn't going to read that at all this weekend, which is absolutely fine. However, I have finished Hook, Line and Sinker by Tessa Bailey, which is the second in the It Happened One Summer series. They're actually companion novels. We follow two different friends. In the first one, we follow Brendan. And in this one, we follow Fox, but we're following two sisters as well. So we follow Piper in the first one and Hannah in this one. And in this one, this is like fisherman romance. So Fox is a fisherman and Hannah basically works for a movie company, production company. She's a PA to a director. Uh, however, she wants to work in music and, you know, produce music for movies. Um, she comes up with a good idea one day. So basically, Hannah and Fox met previously in the first book, which is why you should probably read that one first. Um, so they previously met. They have a very platonic, well, semi-platonic relationship. They are just friends at the beginning of the book, but they do have some kind of feelings for each other that they've been both put into one side uh, because they don't want to ruin their friendship. Um, Fox has an issue with relationships in general. He's always been the lad and perceived as someone who's the lad and just sleeps around. Um, and that comes into play a lot in this book. Uh, Hannah is definitely a settling down type of gal. So she ends up going to town because the movie that they're making um, ends up being made in her town in that town so she ends up coming to town and staying with fox and things go from there it's very good i feel like there's a lot in here actually which um i feel like we don't get this enough actually uh in which we focus on the perception of the man and the fact that over the years his uh family his parents his friends his teachers etc because he's a pretty boy um it very much so expecting him to be Jack the Lad and sleep around and that's all they're expecting from him. They're never expecting him to settle down. They're constantly expecting him to fuck relationships up. And I think it's really good the way that Tessa Baylor's gone into this a lot in this book because I think over the years I've done it to some of my lad friends as well and I don't think it's fair. We shouldn't be doing that to people um because you don't know how what kind of impact it's having on their life and it's never an, assum an assumption you should be making about these people that they enjoy that they're kind of doing this because it's not always the case sometimes they're doing it because it's how they've been perceived their whole lives and they don't know any different and it's not fair to be doing that to people um very much in the same way that if a, a woman has you know a reasonable count if you like body count if you like uh, she's perceived as a slag and i don't think it's fair it's a very similar thing here with the men uh most of the time they get away with it which is true uh but again i just don't think we should be doing it to people ever to anybody uh so i think the discussions in here have been very very good i love hannah and fox i think i gave it happen one summer four stars i enjoyed it but i loved this one so much more and i really um associated with hannah especially with her love for music i have such a love for music and she does in here as well so yeah i really enjoyed this it was very very good had a good time with it i feel like i've flown through it i mean it's taken me i finished it about half eight so it's taken me about eight and a half hours but i was sprinting during that period not for the whole time i stopped for food i watched one of becca's vlogs which was like an hour long vlog so you know it's probably taken me about five and a half six hours to actually read it but I really had a good time. And now I don't know what to do. I think I feel like a movie, but I don't want to... Sometimes I have this really weird headspace. And I was... Becca mentioned it before, but... Um, where I feel guilty sometimes about doing something. It, when, I'm, when I've got free time to read, I feel guilty about not reading and watching a movie instead. Or watching YouTube instead. Or just literally doom scrolling on my phone. Uh, more so when I'm doom scrolling. But um, I feel guilty because I feel like I should be using this time. This is prime time to be reading. But I don't always want to read all the fucking time. Do you know what I mean? So I've spent all day, well not all day, but since 12 o'clock going through this... Um, I finished a book today 
and that was 350 odd pages so i've managed to get also my quota so far for the month for polathon up to 10 fish because i've just hit over a thousand pages for the month so far so that's fantastic as well but I just really fancy a movie I think so I think I'm going to try and find something to watch and then if I do start feeling a bit I don't know guilty or whatever it's still early enough that I could watch a movie and start something else so I do still have A Kiss for a Kiss by Helen Hunting, a Sam for the no Sam for the Wild Built was the first one, A Prayer for the Crown Shy. I can barely see the title and it's over there, uh, Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers and also secrets of camp whatever the doors to nowhere which is the second one in that series that i can still read um and i was having to think before about maybe something else that i could read but i don't know if i'm gonna bother adding anything else i also have realized that i actually do have all of the death notes now so i could binge some of those as well but i think i'm just gonna see how i feel maybe i'll get in bed tonight and start one of these i don't know or maybe I will start the audio for one of my other books. So I'm going to go and potentially put a film on. And I will check back in with you maybe tomorrow. The next day. Don't feel anxious, don't feel shame. If there's a question, it can't wait another day. Don't feel like it's all in vain. I try to remember it ain't a race. myself insane the end of the day you got me in to go dreaming you got me in to go dreaming you got me in to go dreaming it's just this feeling and I'm letting go don't feel anger, don't feel rage If there's an answer, it can't wait till another day Don't regret making mistakes There's no need, it's just the game Breathe out, it doesn't matter anyway Breathe in, it's about happiness in Take a slow, watch the road Stop driving myself insane The end of the day You got me hello hello it is sunday and i am here to give you a very quick update um as we are on our final sprint and i would like to finish the book that i'm currently reading and i have 43 minutes of the audiobook left so uh, i have read a kiss for a kiss by helena hunting today i really enjoyed this one i can't really tell you too much about it because it'll spoil the one that comes before it which i think is a favor for a favor um these are more companion oh a secret for a secret these are more companion novels than anything but we follow guys from the same hockey team uh, and in this one we follow the general manager of the hockey team jake and we also follow hannah who meet in the previous book hence the reason why i don't want to spoil it but we also heavily follow the main characters from the previous book queenie and king so this one follows them and i really enjoyed this one because we're actually actually following an older couple so older than me they're in the 40s and i really really enjoyed it it was nice to go from following couples that are in their 20s like mid to early well early to mid 20s to following a couple that's in their mid to late 40s i had a really good time with it so um i really enjoyed the writing style i really enjoyed the story and where this went and how emotional the characters were and it was nice to see a mature adult relationship despite the fact that yes there were problems throughout the book within the relationship with the two main characters the way they worked through it in an adult way and used their brains 
feelings and you know took a step back and was like okay i'll come back later we'll discuss it then let me take a breather or you need to take a breather just go come back when you're ready etc i really enjoyed that i feel like we don't get to see that much usually there is a breakdown in the relationship is very very um I don't want to say childish, but it's usually a case of miscommunication or something like that that could have been resolved earlier on in the book and there was no need for it. Whereas with this one, it was very much a very adult relationship and they dealt with it in a very adult way and I really enjoyed it. And the way that King and Queenie came into this very heavily as well, I enjoyed that too. So really loved this one and I gave it five stars. I really, really enjoyed it. And it's reminded me that I do have a couple more books from Helena Hunting. I've got kiss my cupcake which i own but i've also got a uh, good luck charm from the library as well and i kind of want to pick them up very very soon so maybe i can make those a priority but i also want to read the pucked series which i believe is a hockey romance smutty hockey romance so five stars for that and then i did pick up a prayer for the crown shy by becky chambers which is the second and final book in the monk and robot series and i'm really <laughs> I just love being with these characters. <laughs> I adore them so much. So we are following Dex and also Mosscap. So Dex is a monk and Mosscap is a robot. Um, and in the first one, it's very much a slice of life book. Dex ends up kind of going out on their own and um, they are basically a tea reader and they go out on their own on the road to read do tea readings for people and they want to kind of find themselves if you like out on the road and they come across this robot now this is in a world where it's set on this world basically but it's in a world where um a few many many years ago robots were like slaves if you like and a, this robot just ends up approaching Dex and they end up sparking up conversation and Mosscap ends up then traveling with Dex and um, they end up helping each other very much so actually with their outlook on life it's very very slice of life and we're just continuing on with this journey and I'm really enjoying it Mosscap is the sweetest thing ever and I adore them so much um but they're really, really cute. And the patience Dex has with Mosscap is so, so nice. And I just really enjoy their relationship as a whole. I really enjoy their journey. It's just really cute. I am currently on page 80. So I am hoping to finish this within this sprint. Uh, I have gone over a little bit now, so I might not quite finish it, but I will get very, very close. And I am predicting five stars for this. I gave the first one five stars. So I would recommend this series but yeah this is going to be my last read i think for the final book support group this weekend um i don't see the point in starting something else i was looking to see if i could finish off a book that i'm part way through i could pick up the friendship pack by jill charvis and try and finish that but i don't know i am only halfway through that one and it's a physical read so it is now 20 past eight and we do have 40 minutes of my sprints left so it's going to be at least quarter past nine before i get off these sprints so maybe i might pick it up i don't know i also kind of want to watch some tv because i've been reading for a good portion of the day since 12 o'clock this afternoon so um yeah we'll see how we get on but i will come back probably either this evening or tomorrow morning and wrap this up um let you know my full thoughts on this one and yeah so i'm gonna go and finish that off and i will check back in with you later the next day okay hello it is monday i am looking extra pale today <laughs> especially against this white wall um i think it's my hair it's quite dark isn't it anyway it's uh 22 11 and it's time to wrap this vlog up um i'm really happy with how the final book support group went this weekend i think the short amount of time 48 hours was really good for people and i think a lot of people managed to get through quite a few things whether that was just a case of trying to get through a very chunky last book um, I know a lot of people reading things like uh, the last book in the Poppy War series. Um, a lot of people were reading some of Robin Hobb's books. And there was a lot of, you know, Akata and books like that. Very chunky books going on. But I also know quite a few people were trying to get through quite a few um, final books during this readathon. And I was one of those people. I managed to make it through three books and I'm really happy. They were all final books. 
um, and I'm really happy about the progress I've managed to make. One of them is, well actually two of them are more so companion, novel, companion novels than anything, but they are parts of series. So, um, I, the other thing I'm really happy about is that they were all five star. Spoiler alert. Um, I had such a blast this weekend reading these. So I did read Hook, Line and Sinker by Tessa Bailey, which is the follow on from It Happened One Summer. I gave It Happened One Summer four stars, but I've given this one five. I really enjoyed the character dynamics in this. I love the friends to lovers trope that went on in here. I really enjoyed Fox and Hannah as characters. It was nice to see Brendan and Piper back in here as well, but I just really enjoyed the whole story with this and I had a really good time with it. So five stars for this one, obviously. I then read A Kiss for a Kiss by Helena Hunting, which is part of the, what's the series called? Uh, all in series so this is book four in that series uh, these are companion novels following different players from the same hockey team and this one we actually follow the general manager so it's an older couple uh, he's 41 I think and I think she's about 46 um, and uh, it's a really good story I can't tell you much more than that because huge spoilers for the pr book prior to this one which actually follows King and Queenie and they are heavily in here as well so uh, five stars for this one I really really enjoyed that the relationship was an older relationship even older than me but I really enjoyed it that there wasn't any childishness to it when there was an argument it was kind of dealt with in such a way that you know one of them might say to the other okay walk it off just go and come back when you've thought your way through it and you're being an adult again etc and they would accept it rather than arguing it and arguing the toss and just making it worse they would accept it they would leave they would realize their mistake and come back i just really enjoyed the maturity of it and i do find that i do enjoy reading more older relationships these days than I do younger ones where the arguments are a little bit more immature and you know just shitty things that could have been avoided so five stars for this one and then the final book that I did read is A Prayer for the Crown Shy by Becky Chambers which is the second one in the Monk and Robot series the first one being a oh good lord a sound for the wild built um which i read on a it wasn't on a whim it was part of a challenge does maddie know my reading tastes and um she actually bought the first book for me and i absolutely loved it it's going to be one of my most surprising books of the year i gave it five stars i also gave this one five stars i absolutely adore this series it's very much slice of life following a monk and a robot and uh, it's very very good it's queer and it's just such a simple story but so effective and i had such a good time with it so um i really did love this one if becky continued on with this series and kind of made it you know like a longer one like the murderbot diaries i would not be mad about that at all um, but if this is where it wraps up completely as well, which I think it is, I am also not mad about that. I would love more from these characters though. So yeah, five stars for this one. So that is my wrap up, all three books, um, three series now complete, uh, which is great news. Uh, unless obviously the Monk and Robot series continues and Helena Hunting changes her mind. Um, but yeah, I had a great time with all of these. I had a great time hosting the sprints as well this weekend, despite the fact that my anxiety was um, showing its ass a little bit, if you like. Uh, but yeah, otherwise I had a fantastic time. Chat to me in the comments down below. Let me know if you took part. What did you manage to read? Did you enjoy yourself this weekend? And yeah, I shall see you in the next video. Bye for now. Thank you.